So right now um, I'm standing right in front of the uh, Burlington Barge Canal, and um, uh, which of course is something that was constructed back in the 19th century uh, to allow barges to uh, load and on, uh, both offload and onload materials here. Um, geologically though, this area um, prior to its use back in the late late 18th, early 19th century was, was a swamp. Um, and we know that because uh, if you drill holes around this area here, um, you find that you come down into kind of wetland um, vegetation. So this area essentially was sitting right at about lake level. Um, and um, if you go down below that, um, what you find is a whole succession of both sediments and um, eventually you come down to um, um, a series of rocks. Locally here, the, the rocks that are underneath us are, are buried quite deeply. They're over 100 feet down um, and they are a series of sedimentary rocks that were originally deposited in, um, um, in an ocean that's referred to as the Iapetus Ocean. Um, specifically, I can't remember exactly which rock unit uh, underlies us. Probably in terms of the, what you see here at the surface, what's more important though are the, um, are the materials that were deposited on top of those rocks. So when the big ice sheet occupied the Champlain Valley, um, there was a variable thickness of material that was deposited directly under the ice. Um, this is what's referred to as glacial till, and that material was essentially plastered uh, on top of those rocks and compressed down onto them um, by, by the weight of the overlying ice sheet. Um, at its maximum thickness here, that ice sheet was approaching three kilometers in, 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 in thickness. Um, so there was a lot of weight uh, pressing down on, on those sediments. When the glacier started, or when the glacier retreated across this area, um, it was essentially um, constrained to the Champlain Valley, meaning that um, if you were down on top of the ice sheet, um, um, approximately 13,500 years ago, um, off to the west uh, you would have seen the Adirondack Mountains, off to the east you would have seen the Green Mountains, and um, importantly off to the south um, you would have seen a large lake, um, and that lake uh, is referred to as Glacial Lake Vermont. It had its outlet down uh, in the neighborhood of Whitehall, New York, um, and Essentially that lake um, or the ice sheet in the valley is what was keeping that lake water um, from draining out to the north the way that Lake Champlain drains now. Um, and so the environment here went pretty much immediately from being uh, an environment where you were underneath the ice to being in a lake. And that lake uh, was here at an elevation a little over 600 feet. Uh, if we think of the lake as uh, the lake, the current lake is being uh, Lake Champlain is being at about 100 feet. That would mean right now we would be under about 500 feet of water, and the shoreline of this lake um, would have been way over in the in the eastern foothills of the Green Mountains. Uh, think about the neighborhood of Jericho or Richmond. So that lake then, uh, you know, existed here. Uh, sediments accumulated in that lake. But we were a long ways from shore, um, and so most of the sediment that was being deposited here was this very, very fine grain material, was, um, silts and clays, um, deposited in relatively thin layers, layer after layer after layer on top of that, that till. Um, and that's pretty much the situation that lasted for several hundreds of years um, until the ice sheet retreated north of the Vermont-Quebec border. And specifically, the important uh, geographic place that it migrated north of was the St. Lawrence River Valley. Because as soon as the ice sheet retreated north of that river valley, this lake water that was impounded here was able to rush out into the, uh, into the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Uh, lake level dropped catastrophically, probably over a period of a few weeks at most. Um, and um, we were here again at the sh uh, shore of Lake Champlain, 
the lake level would have dropped from over 600 feet down to about 300 feet. So we were in a much shallower body of water, um, and that body of water was now open to the North Atlantic Ocean, and it was consequently salt water. And this is what's referred to, of course, as the Champlain Sea. Um, because the shoreline now might, or because the water was shallower, um, um, the shoreline of the Champlain Sea was much closer to where we are now. Um, and the Winooski River started depositing a tremendous amount of sediment in this area. It started out being, uh, as being a very fine silts and, and clays, or, or excuse me, silts and very fine sands. Um, and then with time, essentially a large delta that's currently where the, uh, or, or that delta is located now where the airport is, that delta kept on migrating farther and farther west, closer and closer to where we are. And those sediments became gradually coarser and coarser because um, essentially the river was, um, the energy level of that river system um, increased the energy level of this particular spot. Um, so the bulk of the sediments underneath our feet then are, were deposited in the Champlain Sea. And that Champlain Sea was in existence probably from about 12,000 years ago until probably maybe as recently as nine or as 8,000 years ago. Once the Champlain Sea um, ended, it did not end catastrophically uh, the way that Glacial Lake Vermont ended. Um, its end was dictated by the gradual rise of the land surface, which had um, sunk um, as a result of the weight of the overlying glacier. Um, and that gradual rise of the land surface eventually cut off the outlet of the lake to the north. Um, and so if you were here at that time, year after year after year, or at least over tens of years, hundreds of years, you would have noticed that essentially at any one spot here, um, that um, you know, the water would start to have changed from salt water to fresh water and get progressively less, less salty and more fresh. Um, and, um, and in addition to that, um, because of the way the land surface was tilting at this particular place and pretty much everywhere in the Champlain Basin, the water actually got deeper. Uh, while this was taking place. Um, so we went through a transition, first of all, of you know, Glacial Lake Vermont sediments, then the Champlain Sea sediments. Um, those Champlain Sea sediments getting, starting out as silt, turning into sand, and then eventually um, that um, um, getting coarser as the delta moved closer to us. And then eventually things got a little deeper here. Um, but um, eventually um, 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 the water level stabilized to a point where um, Lake Champlain is at the level that it is right now. And again, uh, this broad surface that's behind us here, the whole Barge Canal site, um, um, was sitting just about at, at sea level, or it's not at sea level, but at lake level. So a lot of vegetation, a lot of, a lot of swamp uh, plants that were growing in here. Um, if you drill a hole down, actually the very first materials that you come to are not those swamp materials though. They're actually remnants of the human history here. And they include a lot of sawdust uh, and a lot of bark um, because of the, um, there were, there was an extensive, or many, many sawmills that were um, in this area here and just like sawmills everywhere, there's a tremendous amount of sawdust that's generated. There's a tremendous amount of bark that's, um, that's generated. Um, and those materials that weren't being used for other purposes were literally just dumped and used as fill in this, in this area. So that's pretty much the, the history 